it's Friday! It's Friday, it's March. So, we have a lot to celebrate. And so today, we're going to get our pie game going because it's almost pie season. So, one of the things I wanted to dig in to was pie finishes. What, my, what I mean by that is, you know, when you make a pie, sometimes the recipe will call for, oh, do an egg wash, or oh, do a milk wash, or um, brush water on it and put some sanding sugar on it. And sometimes the recipe doesn't tell you anything. And I'm looking at you, Pie and Pastry Bible author, which is my complete, it is my Bible for pies. I basically thank that book for helping me win three pot, three apple pie awards. So yes, it is the bomb. It is legit. But my only complaint is it doesn't go into finishes. Um, and there's a blueberry pie recipe in there that I swear by, and I made it again this week. And one of the things that's always bugged me about this pie is there's no, fi there's no finish. The recipe doesn't tell you to finish it. Um, so I pull it out and it always just, it looks unfinished. Um, so I really wanted to see and play with all the different finishes that pie and pastry people uh, use. So that's everything from water to a full egg with a tablespoon of water, thus an egg wash, mm -hmm. and everything in between. There's a lot of other trending finishes, especially for vegan and vegetarian people, um, like coconut oil. Um, so I really wanted to just see what happens with these different finishes and, and just look at them all at once and say, okay, this is what I like, this is what I would use. And so next time I make a pie, depending on what I've got on hand, or if I'm at the store, you know, what to buy to make, really make your pie stand out and really look, you know, the bomb, right? Because pies are a lot of work. Why would you, why would you do all that work and then not really fin have it look finished, right? Um, I want to point out a couple things. One, we're going to play with just a store-bought uh, refrigerator pie dough, refrigerator dough, um, and I have just canned filling. So this is not about the pie. This isn't about the filling. I kept it really simple and apples to apples, like a true experiment. Um, the other thing is we're only playing with liquid finishes, liquid-ish finishes. We're not going to delve into the different kinds of sugars and salts and things like that that you can do. Um, any glazes, you could even do like melted fruit glazes, not going there, okay? That's going to be probably another video that we can play with, but um, just simple liquid-ish finishes. So anyway, join me in the kitchen. Let's delve into this and make some decisions, right? Decisions on how you, as a domestic diva and as a pie baker, are going to finish your pies from here on in. Okay, so we're gonna play with the usual suspects here. So it's everywhere from plain to your dairy proteins like milks and creams, to egg proteins, to butter, and thought we'd play with a fat that doesn't necessarily have um, impurities or water. Um, I'm gonna use ghee, but for those of you that wanna be vegan, you could do coconut oil. It's kind of the same thing. All right, let's dive in. All right, so we're gonna start with water, nice cold water, pretty simple and basic. And the expectation here is you're gonna get a nice crispier, crustier finish, but not with much sheen. Now, butter is a favorite among pastry chefs. But one thing to note, butter has impurities in it, water and other things. So what tends to happen, and we're gonna see if this is true, is that kind of the butter fat separates from the water as it bakes and you get more of a, a speckled browning where the little um, pockets of fat end up settling. We'll see if that works. Or we'll see if that's true. To combat that speckling with the butter, this is where I thought a more pure fat could be interesting, where a lot of the impurities have been taken out. So this is ghee, and you know, I could melt it a little bit more so it's not so clumpy. 
But let's see if a ghee, or like I mentioned earlier, um, coconut milk, gives a more even browning than butter, but you still get that rich golden look from what a fat can, um, can do. All right, we're gonna go meander onto the other side of the baking sheet. Okay, so we're going to have a difference here between milk and cream, and what I decided to do was get a reduced fat milk, just so we can see the difference a little bit more pronounced between the cream and the milk. Obviously, it's gonna be a difference in fat content, and the reason why I went with lower fat milk is because usually that's what most Americans have in their fridge. So if you're just whipping up a pie and you just have some reduced fat milk on hand because that's what you're giving your family, let's see what that does. And then on the other side of the spectrum is some really rich, heavy cream. Talk about butter fat. It looks like it's starting to be cream already. So let's see what kind of finish we get with heavy cream. If it's too thick for you, you can always just dab a little bit of water in here. Right here we've got a full egg wash, which is a whole egg, and I've thrown in a tablespoon of water and whisked it around with a fork. Now, the theory here is the protein in the egg yolk gives it a really nice golden color, and the thing with the eggs really gives it a nice shine and glaze to it. So let's see if this is true. And another approach that's a favorite among pie makers is your egg white wash. So it's without the yolk, without that extra golden protein, golden colored protein. So same thing, I've whipped an egg white with a tablespoon of water. And you just kind of glaze it on. The nice thing with the egg washes in particular is they're really great for finishing with sugar, sanding sugar. All right, so here's our naked one. So this is with no finish at all. There's still some nice golden color here. I do think that once you see all of them together, it does look a little unfinished. Um, even a, a sprinkling of sanding sugar would be nice on this, just to finish it off. So I think from now on, I'm not gonna do um, naked pie crusts anymore. It looks, hmm, looks a little boring. All right, so let's move on over to our cold water, which definitely gives it a nice, um, some crisping up of the crust. I don't know if you can see a little bit of that, that flaky bubbling on the dough. See that little bit of bubbling right there? So it does crisp up the crust, probably giving you a, a nice flaky texture. The browning is similar to our naked, but it's a little bit more even, so something to consider. Um, a little bit of a sheen, but not much. But definitely better than going plain, in my opinion. All right, let's move over to our butter and ghee. Dang. All right, so here's our butter, and here's our ghee. I did not get good browning on my ghee. So both of these have some bubbling. I will say that the browning is a little inconsistent and you can see there's like uh, maybe like some of the butter fat kind of settled. So it doesn't bother me that much. It also has flaked up the crust a little bit. I don't like the finish on the ghee. It almost looks similar. I'm gonna show you the ghee for a minute and I'm gonna show you the plain with nothing. They look almost similar. I'm very surprised by that. So I guess if you're gonna do a butter fat or 
you know, you could try coconut oil and maybe that would be a little different. But I think between these two, I like the butter better. Let's move on over to milks and eggs. All right, let's, let's talk eggs here. Now you can see that the difference with the egg compared to what we were looking at before with your butter is the shine. There's definitely a shine to the egg. This has a full egg wash and this one was just the egg white. And I don't know which one I like better. <laughs> this is definitely more even. Definitely more even browning versus your egg white. And it's a richer color. It's a richer golden color. Um, and it seems to have flaked up some of the crust a little bit. So my guessing is the flavor is probably better here. It's got more of a richer flavor. I do like the shine. I like the finish there. It looks like a finished pie. It might be overkill for some pies, but it's awfully nice. Okay, so now we've got the 2% milk and your cream. Now there is a shine, it's very, very subtle, but there is a shiny finish, especially to the cream one. The milk one is a little more dull. The milk one looks a lot like, like the water, except that you can see some, some flaky activity happening to the crust with these fats. So you're getting a golden color similar to water, but the crispy flaky stuff from the butter, the, from the milk fats is uh, doing some, some nice things. I will say the cream has more of a shine to it and a more even browning. My guess is if you went with whole milk here, you get as an even browning, more even browning than the 2%, because the 2% probably has some water in it that's separating out the fat. So um, more fat, the better. Imagine that. <laughs> well, I don't know. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comments what you guys prefer or if there's a certain finish that you, guys, you go to that I've not tried. Um, personally, I think I'm in the butter camp for simpler, if I want something simple, both a nice finish or cream. But if I want a statement, um, I think a full egg wash would be really nice. That's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> well, that does it today for Friday. I hope you enjoyed this. I know I did because I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Um, so now I know that for my own baking, I'm really never going to leave one of my pies naked again. So now that I know, depending on what I have on hand and what I'm trying to achieve with my pie, I have a pretty good sense of what I can do to really bring that pie into the spotlight, you know, and really finish it off and make a statement. Because, you know, pies are a work. They're a lot of work. And when you're making pies um, for the season and you've got all that beautiful, wonderful seasonal fruit that, you know, especially in the Midwest is so precious, you know, um, I know a lot of you out in the warmer climates, it's like, oh, fresh fruit, big deal. But for us, it's a big deal. So when you're making that effort, finishing it off, it's just taking it right to the finish line. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Probably do a second one where we talk about um, more uh, sprinkling toppings versus the liquid stuff. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me. I do want to do a shameless plug for me on the great grow along event for those of you that are um into gardening and many of you probably took up gardening in 2020 during covid um and you want to up your game a little bit come join me and many many wonderful experts and influencers and plant people at the great grow along event um go to the great grow along event.com and sign up get tickets um and it's basically a three-day festival of gardening and geared to novice gardeners, but definitely expert gardeners will learn something. We've got Doug Telemay, guys. That's a big deal. So um, it's the weekend of the spring equinox. So join us, and that's a great way to celebrate spring, okay? So come on over, get your tickets, and come join us. It's gonna be lots and lots of fun. So what's the date on that? Let me see. Oh. March 19th, 20th, and 21st. So get your tickets before then. 
Okay, so that's my shameless plug. Anyway, get baking and it's almost pie season, so get your pie game on, guys. Anyway, stay safe, stay well, and please subscribe below before you leave me and have a great weekend and rest of the week next week. Bye.